I really do love big electric things. And if big electric things can work, then surely any size electric thing can work. And all the people who moan on and on about, oh, you can't make something run on batteries and motors when it's this big, just sounds like whining. So on that note, we've come to see this, the world's biggest electric ferry. In fact, this is the world's biggest electric vehicle. It's 310 meters long. It can carry 2,100 passengers. It can carry 225 cars, and it goes into service later this year. So we've come to Hobart in Tasmania to see this amazing construction. That is a great big ferry. And this is the Everything Electric Show. We've teamed up with Duracell Energy to celebrate their brilliant ecosystem of home energy products and their platinum homeowner offer by giving away a Duracell bunny. To win, simply watch to the end and answer a question about the Fully Charged Show. INCAT, the shipbuilders and the brains behind this all-electric ferry, have been building high-speed catamaran ferries since 1977. And the other special thing about this workshop is we're in Tasmania. Tasmania is effectively 100% renewably powered. It's a net zero uh, island. It's a very big island. And uh, so this shipyard is the cleanest shipyard in the world, and it is building the cleanest ship in the world. And I think that's quite an achievement. Our South American customer uh, wanted an electric ship. I'd been looking at electric ships for some time, and when he said the next ship will be electric, well, I grabbed the opportunity. Right. It's a passenger and car ferry. It'll be running across the River Plate uh, in South America, between Argentina and uh, Uruguay. Uh, it's a relatively short run, 35 miles. He'll be charging at both sides. And a number, couple of unusual features. He wants a very shallow draft because the river's shallow in places. Right. Uh, he also wants high speed. However, it, it's a little bit debatable how fast he will go because he wants the customers to be shopping on board. Uh, right. He will run up to 10 crossings a day. Right. So potentially he has a couple of thousand or 20,000 uh, customers, customers a day, a day wow. all in and out of his duty-free <laughs> shop. It's basically a floating duty-free shop. But going 100% electric isn't just about like swapping out the dirty old diesel engines. It's, you've got to refine everything to make the ship as light and as efficient as possible to squeeze the maximum amount out of the batteries. But luckily, Incat are pros. In fact, they are the first company to build purely aluminium catamarans back in the 1990s. And these are catamarans that are capable of carrying passengers and vehicles. So we're talking big, chunky things. So you can learn more about amazing electric ships like this, but also a huge array of clean energy technology, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of electric vehicle test drives, and much, much more at Everything Electric in Sydney on the 7th, 8th and 9th of March. Check the description box below this for details on how to get tickets. It's a must. I have to admit, I didn't even know it was possible to build the entire vessel out of aluminium. I mean, I've only ever seen, been in shipyards with steel ships, I guess that was it. Uh, it is, this will also be the largest aluminium ship, to the best of my knowledge. Right. We've built many, many aluminium ships. Right. In fact, this is hull number 96. Right. So, so we've been building aluminium ships all our business life. Right. So the reality is that aluminium is not unusual for us, but the scale of it is increasing almost yearly. And I mean, is there any reason you couldn't build bigger and bigger with aluminium? There's no, there's no other uh, reason. We could build an aircraft carrier out of aluminium. Right. Yes, it's perfectly possible. Wow. <laughs> Everything that we've seen is aluminium. Everything. These stairs in the grand hall and the and the big what will be the big shops here. These are all aluminium stairs. Incredible. The structure. Everything I can see here is made of aluminium, and that means the whole ship is much, much lighter, like three times lighter than a steel ship of the equivalent size, which means it needs less energy to move it through the water at speed. Uh, within a few years, these lightweight aluminium ships are going to take over. Right. Aluminium is so important that it's half the weight of steel, Plus, we don't live on board like you do on a, on a uh, typical steel ship. So all the crew facilities will be living ashore and all their facilities, they can't be more like an aircraft in, that, right. in the crewing aspect. Yeah. 
uh, and that saves a lot of weight as well. So if we are one third the weight of a steel ship, we need one third the power to drive it. To move it, yeah. And therefore one third the charging time when we get to port. Yeah. So it's not just the, uh, the economics of it, Ferries need to be in port for the littlest time possible. Yeah. 40 minutes or thereabouts is fairly normal. Uh, an hour and a half maybe across the, uh, the, a given channel. Yeah. Uh, and then charging up and away you go again. Right. How does what you're building here then compare in terms of efficiency, in terms of move, movement efficiency? It, it, it... Well, it's very good uh, because, uh, first of all, uh, the previous ship was going to be uh, LNG powered. Right. It had 400 tonne of main engine, 100 tonne of gearboxes and uh, 100 tonne of fuel tanks right. and uh, 100 tonne of fuel content. All of that's been replaced by about uh, 300 tonne of batteries. Right. So it's actually lighter. And, uh, and, and therefore more efficient. Yeah. And of course, we're not polluting the atmosphere. Yeah. So I'm standing in one of four battery rooms on board the ship. As you can hear, it's still very noisy. There's a lot of construction going on all around me. This is where the batteries will sit. Eventually, they'll go right up to the ceiling. There's 250 tons of batteries being installed on this ship, 40 megawatt hours of power. And each of these um, uh, battery bays is isolated from the rest of the ship. You know, they've really worked out how to do this. The actual drive system is intriguing, I think, for landlubbers who don't know, because I think we all think there's going to be a propeller that spins underwater. But this is like a... Could you explain that? This is more like a jet ski that is pr pushing it along. Uh, ships that are operating in deep water, for, let's say the English Channel, yeah. will, will be propeller-driven. Right. Uh, in this case, the ship is operating in two and a half metres of water only. Oh, that's very, really very shallow, shallow for wow. a large ship. Yeah. And the only way we can do that is by water jets. Right. And the water jets uh, literally suck in the water from underneath the hull and expel it uh, so the, the ship goes in a forward motion. Right. And what this a ship can actually produce is 24,000 horsepower. And that is... Powered, uh, that is produced by f uh, eight huge electric motors that drive these uh, water thrusters. Now, if you've ever seen a jet ski, you know, <laughs> those things that go really fast, it's exactly the same technology as this, but this is just hugely bigger. So there's four turbines like this that push the water out like massive jets of water coming out the back of the ship. Then there's four of these ones, which are the steering ones. And that whole big massive box there moves from side to side. That's helped steer the ship. And it's, it's just on such a huge scale that it's unbelievable. And what is really interesting is I've always thought, you know, to make a ship move, you've got to have something going whiz, whiz, whiz underwater. The water level's kind of about there. This isn't underwater. This is a, a, almost above water. So you will see this huge tail of water shooting out the back of this boat when it moves across. So each of these water jets is using 2,200 kilowatts of energy. And that is the same amount of energy that is used by four jet engines on a Boeing 747 when it's taking off. Not when it's cruising, when it's taking off maximum power. These are chunky. It's worth noting this powertrain was developed by Wartzilla, a marine company who specialise in propulsion systems and integrated powertrain systems, who've been working with INCAP for the past 30 years. It's incredible that they've managed to create a system that delivers four times the power of current electric hybrid ships, providing unparalleled efficiency. So the, and, uh, do you have any idea of the uh, amount of power that they will charge it with, what, the scale of it? They're talking about 40 megawatts of power being available on both sides, uh, <laughs> which is a lot of power. <laughs> That's now, it's, it's needed in that scale because yeah. they want to do it quickly. Yeah. If uh, we don't have that amount of power available in our shipyard, for example, right. so we will take maybe days to recharge the ship, Yeah. not the minutes that they will be in yeah. service. Wow, that is incredible, isn't it? Um, and so, OK, the, the, the really one that really intrigued me once I found out where you're building it and where it's going to be used is... How does it get from here to there? And I don't know how far it is because I'm not familiar with the uh, well, it, uh, it's quite a long way. It's, it's, I think it's 5,000 odd miles right. or more. The reality is it's got to be, uh, it, there are three ways of going. Right. You can put uh, uh, electric generators on the ship. Right. Diesel power generators, that's a possibility. It's a possibility to go on a heavy lift ship. Oh, right, so it could be lifted onto another ship. ship. Right. 
uh, and it's also possible to tow. To tow so yeah. that's the owner's decision, and right. uh, it, it really doesn't concern me which way it goes. Right. <laughs> it goes. It will go down the river, and that's the end of it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully so. <laughs> What an incredible privilege it's been to see this machine being built. It is really, really game changing. And the plans that INCAT have for future ships, bigger, longer range. I mean, you know, it's such an exciting area of technology. I never thought I would see anything like this when we started making the fully charged show and everything electric show many, many years ago. It really is very, very impressive. Uh, please do subscribe to the Everything Electric Show if you haven't already. And as always, if you have been, Thank you for watching. We're really excited to partner with Duracell Energy to showcase their amazing renewable energy solutions. If you want to reduce your energy bills and join the renewable energy transition, installing home battery storage and solar panels at home is a great way to start. Duracell Energy's ecosystem of products typically partners with solar panels, but they can be used just as effectively without it, particularly for electric vehicle owners or anyone looking to take control of their energy. And with Duracell Energy's Platinum Homeowner Offer, viewers can get a custom service that pairs you with top quality products and the best installers in your area. Your installation also comes with a 20-point check, a six-month performance review, system health checks at three- and ten-year periods, and outstanding local UK customer support every step of the way. Plus, Duracell Energy's batteries, inverters, and EV chargers work together on one easy-to-use app. With features like dynamic tariff integration and grid services, you'll be able to maximise your return. Ready to get started? You can get your quote today. And don't forget, we're also giving away a Duracell Energy Bunny in every episode. Just answer the question about fully charged by following the link in the description. Good luck!